Yo, what is going on today? I really want to share one of my previous projects and that is painting a basketball court. I've done it twice and I learned a lot from it. I want to do that today because I get a lot of questions about that, you know, trying to figure out how to demystify that so that you are able to sort of have some of that knowledge is what I want to do today. So before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I do videos like this. So I have always wanted to to paint a basketball court or a tennis court, you know, anything flat, mainly because I like the idea of having someone being active on top of my artwork. Break dancing, running, jogging, walking, you know, you know, walking the dog, whatever. I want them to sort of be active on top of a painting because I just like the idea. And I've seen a lot of other sort of artists do it. So I really wanted to sort of like venture into that realm. So I got the opportunity to do that for the first time from my friends from Be A Good Person. They're a local clothing brand. You probably have seen me wear their stuff a lot and at the time they were teaming up with Lululemon to do a sort of clothing drop and sort of get active in the community so they actually wanted me to paint a basketball court that they were going to activate for yoga and sort of healing and you know different activities things like that for the community and this was really really cool I didn't know how to do it but like I tell other artists just say yes and you can figure it out because that's all we're doing as artists we're just trying to figure it out so one of the first things that I did was go to the local paint shop and I assumed that it was house paint that I needed to use but one thing I like about this uh, paint shop is that when I talk to them about the projects that I'm sort of working on and why I'm sort of buying the product they sort of tell me you know hey this is the right product or this is not the right product and this time they said I did not have the right product because I had house paint, you know, latex paint, things, you know, you can do for murals and, you know, on a wall. And I thought that would be, you know, suffice to do it on the ground. They said, no, you need a stain. And they were sort of explaining to me the difference between a paint and a stain. A stain basically is absorbed into the substrate or whatever you're putting it on. So like wood, concrete, asphalt, and a paint just sits on top. So as the stain is absorbed into it, and the paint sits on top of it so it's, does, it's not one with the actual sort of uh, substrate. Over time, when things start to age, the paint will start to chip away. So when you see old buildings and the paint chips away, that's because it's not absorbed in the substrate, whereas the stain is a part of that substrate or that material, so it's not going to chip away. So that's what I learned as I was talking to them about my project, and they recommended a product called Tough Creek and Tough Crete was something that they had in stock. One thing that I really liked about this product, Tough Crete, that they recommended was that it's tintable. And that just means I'm able to get it in a ton of different colors. So they were able to sort of take the colors that I wanted and actually make a stain based on those colors. So I had a wide variety of colors to work with. And that was really great because I wasn't really limited at all in terms of you know colors in a very sort of specific product. And this product, you're not gonna find this at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's usually at a sort of specialized paint store. I don't know if they have it at Sherman Williams, but they have it at my local paint shop called Guyries. One thing about this thing that I really liked was that it was water soluble. So basically Basically, it was a water-based acrylic. That just means um, I'm able to, you know, use it with my sprayer, with my rollers. I'm able to clean it up really easy. Warm water will allow me to sort of clean a lot of stuff up. So it wasn't like I had to have any special, you know, equipment. Not only that, Tough Crete basically felt and looked like regular latex paint. So I was able to use it almost kind of like I would regular latex house paint. I'm sure there's other products out there, similar sort of stains that will do some of the same things, but Tough Crete was one that was readily available. And, you know, like I said, I was able to get it in a ton of different colors. All I had to do was pick a color from their color rack and tell them that I wanted that in the Tough Crete stain. The coverage was actually really, really good. Um, each gallon covers between 400 and 500 square feet. And depending on the color, you may need to do a second coat, but sometimes I only needed to do one coat 
for you know certain colors so the greens and the purples and the teals I only needed to do one coat and then with the reds and yellows and oranges you know I did another coat but you know I was really really surprised how great it covered so the court I was painting I bought about 30 gallons. I had some left over because I didn't use all of certain colors. This will vary depending on, you know, the size of your cord or whatever you're painting and your design as well. So I only had two main tools and that was my roller, basically one of these nine inch rollers that uh, has, uh, it's pretty nappy. But uh, then I had the extender as well so that I'm not bent over all the time because, you know, when you're sort of rolling paint or using paint, you know, you don't want to bend over all day. So I had my sort of pull extension to just, I'm able to stand up and just roll it across the, the court. And the other tool that I used was an airless sprayer, a Graco 390 PC airless sprayer. That thing was overkill. So you're able to get away with a smaller sprayer, mainly because like I said, this stain fills and uh, moves and has the same consistency as uh, latex house paint so I can use a regular smaller sprayer as well so I would suggest maybe a Magnum 5x sprayer is something that I've been using with that sort of uh, product now so I would roll I would basically throw the paint because my work is abstract I would actually throw the paint uh, in different places and then actually just roll it out in an abstract sort of form I had to actually have a drone to actually see what this looked like from you know really far away because I wasn't able to sort of do that you know standing on the ground as I sort of went through the actual process of you know painting this thing I basically just threw paint rolls it around and then used the sprayer to sort of blend everything together I like this sort of product mainly because it's it dries really fast it dries in about I'd say 30 minutes to an hour depending on the weather and humidity for it to fully fully cure it takes about 72 hours so for us it was great because we were actually able to you know just use it and play on top you know the next day I wouldn't say have heavy traffic on it but I was able to go back over and continue the process of painting uh, while stepping on some of the pieces that I sort of painted the day before as far as the white lines on basketball courts and tennis courts basically what we did was we just threw down painter's tape on top of the line. I think there were about two inch thick tape. So we went across the line with the tape. We just used those as guides. We knew we would have to sort of paint over the line again because as you're sort of painting on top of the tape, it does bleed through. So you're not always going to have like a crispy line uh, when you take the tape off. So you're gonna to have to redo those lines. But that was really simple enough. You know, after we get everything sort of painted, the actual piece put down, uh, basically we just have to go over with those white lines one thing I really recommend for a lot of you getting into the space right now is make sure you prime it with white if you're sort of going on top of a dark surface uh, the court that we did at Curtis Park was like a dark green at first so it was really difficult for a lot of the yellows and the oranges to really pop through. So this is something that I started doing, you know, in future sort of projects is making sure that I sort of prime everything with a white sort of stain and then go on top with a color stain. So it just makes it pop a lot better. And one note, you can always do multiple coats. So I would say if you can and you can afford it, definitely prime it with a white stain so that you're able to have the colors pop when you sort of put the color stains on top. Now let's get into sealant. And the crazy thing about the sealant is that I didn't need a sealant at all. The properties and characteristics of this tough creek stain, because it's absorbed into the substrate, and it has the qualities of being sort of scuff resistant, scratch resistant, weather resistant, and sort of fade resistant. I didn't need anything on top to protect it. So I was able to actually just throw the paint on there, you know, do what I had to do in terms of just the color work and my design, and then basically just leave it, let it dry for a couple of days, and then it's done. So the first basketball court that I did is about uh, two years, just under two years old, and the colors look really good, just like new. They actually filmed their promo on the basketball court recently, and the colors just really, really pop. So the colors, you know, are not fading, and in Colorado, we get the most sun out of any other place 
in the nation in the US so basically you know I love 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 this product because the colors don't fade and there's been a lot of sort of activity on this court and I don't see a lot of sort of scuffing and scratches uh, as much as you know there would have been and not only that like I said because the stain is absorbed into the actual substrate it's a part of it you know I don't have to worry about sort of coming back and fixing a lot of stuff at all so I really like this product so if you're getting into to the space trying to sort of not only paint a basketball court but if you're trying to paint a sidewalk or you know a, a flat top surface in a playground or whatever you know tough crude is something that I would definitely recommend as well as rollers if you need to and like I said because it sort of fills and moves just like latex house paint I think you know there's not a big learning curve when sort of being approached with this product. So I'll have a link to the Tough Crete and then the other product as well, just so you can compare. If you like the other product, you can get that one as well. But this is what I have been using on a lot of my projects that require me to sort of paint horizontally, as well as have people walk on top of it. So like I said, hopefully this video helps you out. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I do videos. And I will see you next time. Peace.